Hello my friends and welcome to episode of Inside Data Electronics where I opening and reviewing a product which was so sent to me as a review sample. I didn't buy it, this is like one of two ever were sent to me as a review sample. So this is Koto Soldering Station Tool. It's new, it's awesome and made in China. So people contacted me, I think they are on Amazon, just like, hey, dude, you have some review of soldering stations, can you take a look at our soldering station thing when you say, and tell us what you think? And I was like, okay, of course, of course, I um, like to take a look at um, some interesting, uh, you know, electronic engineering equipment tools, and this time it's a soldering station, which is paramount for every um, little guy, every guy who would like to do some electronics. So that's essential electronics tool. So let's take a look what we have. Uh, I have no idea what it is. Uh, I roughly uh, saw a photo of it or quickly saw a photo of it and I would like to see in details what is this. So let's just unbox it first. I hope it's not it is gonna bump the camera. All right I'm just gonna do this. It's very simplistic packaging nothing too fuss about. Oh. Yes, I saw that. And this is KT68P instruction manual. This is Koto KT68P soldering station. And it looks like that. It looks like a turtle or look like a little tank. It's very, very, very interesting. So, well, if you are here, let's just talk about some specs. It's um, 60 watt. No, it's a 60 watt consumption of the whole device, 50 watt of the soldering, uh, soldering iron, 50 ceramic heater, blah blah blah, tip based thermocouple, 24 volt, output voltage, temperature range, la la la. Okay, 24 volt, it's, it's a typical. I think it's very, it's the same what my Godrak broken actually station has. La la la, there's some user manual. Oh wow, it's many thingies here. There's some settings and things like that. Well so far user manual is is nice in comparison to some weird ass printed little piece of paper. It's not bad. So let's take a look what we have. So let's take a look first at the soldering station. Soldering soldering iron or it's actually remind me about something. I think this is totally compatible with my Godrak, broken Godrak thing. So probably if my soldering iron still works from that Godrak device, I can reuse it. Yeah, it totally re reminds me about that. So kind of switched for T12, T15 cartridges, the other soldering station already reviewed. Uh, always forget its name because it's unpronounceable. Uh, it, but it uses T12 cartridges and this is, uh, I think cartridges are so much more better because first of all it's much easier to change them, not I'm actually changing them very often but it's easier to change them instead of like you have to unscrew here and this and that. So temperature control I think is better there as well because it's all one unit, not thermocouple separate from the tip when it's separate you can have some air in between, yada yada yada, and your actual temperature measurement may not be as good or uh, not what you think they are. But nevertheless, it's still way better, way better than the just regular plug in into the mains soldering uh, iron. Okay, obviously, there is a power cord, and it uses my favorite this sort of pin, I don't know how do you call it, 3 pin, 3 pin, yeah. Okay, I just put it aside. Then we have some soldering tips, like five tips come uh, with the soldering iron. Pretty basic stuff, I think I have actually already a bunch of these guys sitting around again from the previous soldering station. I think those are like a Hako clones or something. Yeah, I think even I have a few genuine Hako lying around. This guy... This guy is actually not too bad. It's pretty solid. It's actually better than what I have. Yeah, so the soldering iron goes like this and I assume... I'm gonna go open this and I assume tips. Sitting here or something? 
okay that's how you do it but nevertheless they are sitting here it's an interesting ceramic cartridge kind of see the uh, some sort sort of probably the heating element and it's this thermocouple probably it's a little bit different than what I have with the other iron because that cartridge was not through hole the other uh, heater cartridge interesting interesting maybe this one is actually better because it's kind of spring you see yeah that's maybe better maybe more precise so we will check that well I don't have a thermometer to actually check that so yeah probably gauge not check rather right so this is and here we are oh it's quite heavy I must say it's a quite beefy unit over here let's remove the box everything is black so oh mamma mia I'm just curious who's designer because this look like I don't know some sci-fi thing I don't know what to think actually it doesn't look bad it just look so unconventional yeah it's look looks in totally unconventional unconventional because usually you would expect device to be a like um, how do you say stackable for example I would prefer to have um, soldering iron controller to be like that you know like this box or just to because I can put something on top of it and you know and something else on top of it but, but maybe it's not designed to be stackable because you know you cannot this is it's gonna it's gonna warm up I guess but I'm not sure if it has any fans it has some ventilation holes uh, but you know you you maybe it's not a good idea to enclose it in something and put a bunch of stuff around it because it may overheat and things like that but it is what it is that's pretty un unconventional design so yeah well uh, this time I would like to actually power it up play with it a bit and then we're gonna take a look what's inside all right so now when we are generally look at, the, um, at this uh, soldering station, let's try to use it. Let's see how it operates. But before we actually um, start it up, I would like to power it up and measure how quickly it gets to certain temperatures. Okay, so I think to power it on, to turn it on is this button. So now it reaches 300 try to reach 390 whatever 6 degrees and see how fast it's gonna get there yeah it takes a time takes a time just move a little bit That's 400 C, but A, still. Three hundred ninety eight C for 47 or so seconds. This is just for your information. <clears throat> I cannot comment it. For me, it's a bit on the slower side, but hey, I mean, that's that was relatively quick. So. What kind of operation we can have here? So right there we saw that you can shut it down like off by this button you can power it on. What are you gonna if you're gonna hold it? What's gonna happen? Oh you're gonna switch to Fahrenheit. So 750F. Number three over here, I suspect this is a uh, preset. So this soldering station supports three presets. Number three, number one, and number two. So and I'm pretty sure you can tweak around the temperature like for example we turn it down to 380 right now right the only thing what is um, I don't see here uh, what is set versus what it's what it's typical temperature so it would be nice to actually see differentiations like you know if it's set to 400 and current temperature is 350 
and it displays 350, you don't really know what it's set to, right? So for example, I drop it, do drop it down, let's say, to 320. Blink, now it's 300 it, and it's dropping. So it's really hard to tell what's going on. Obviously when it's dropping, you, you, you understand that it's going down, but hey. Okay, let's remove the phone and um, and let's let's say let's take one of the typical temperatures where we have 275 okay so right now it's probably hotter than that 300 it's it's it's, it's dropping so i would like to have this uh, wet sponge over here i would like to do a wet test when i'm gonna dip this thing into the sponge and see how fast it how how quickly it goes down and how quickly it recovers um, maybe actually I'm gonna make it 300 I think 300 is like typical temperature 300 and if you hold this button I think it's gonna save 300 all right it blinked so now uh, one number one over here is without white and it's 300 preset to 300 and I think the temperature is is actually around 300 because it's not changing, which is weird. You, you don't know if this is target temperature or this is actual temperature. So this is something, you know. Yeah, all right. So 300C, let's jam this sink into wet sponge. Lots of steam coming out. Two twenty-five. Obviously, water start evaporating at the, around the uh, the iron. It's it's not dropping anymore. So it dropped from three hundred to two twenty-five fairly quickly, but now it's stable. So it's stabilized. Let's remove it. I would say it's fairly quickly goes back up to three hundred. Gonna see if it's gonna overshoot. Actually, it's not that bad. It did not overshoot. It only took, oh, there were six to seven seconds to go back. Okay, guys, we have our soldering um, iron set to 300C, and let's try to melt some solder. So um, this is regular. I think it's a silver, yes, um, a lead-free solder, and it's obviously 3C. It just takes no time uh, to melt. You just clean it up nicely. And this is rosin core, so not again, um, uh, leadless or lead free solder from Jamico Value Pro. And it's um, rosin core, it's just obviously melts like super, super easy. But that's not the real test, right? This is obviously uh, gonna work. This is gonna be real test. So we have here very crappy or crusty power supply from my 3D printer. It used to be from my 3D printer and has this two big ass 24 volt over here a power it's not working by the way power planes and let's take a look what's gonna happen if you try to melt them probably a 300c gonna take forever it's already kind of pick up some solder but that's a joke i think it's a joke so let's do higher temperature 340c and it's doing so much better. Yeah, it's, it's but still, it's a consistency of like yogurt kind of paste. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have enough juice. Maybe I have to change, put it, uh, put a different um, soldering tip here. But it's, uh, it's kind of going there, kind of. Yeah, it's not really scientific test. It just you can see that it it's doing but it's not doesn't have enough like okay now just crank it up to 400 C and this thing starts pixels start changing much better so meltings yeah it melts much much better but still it's kind of yogurt kind of consistency yeah, but it had for 400C, you are able to actually melt this jars properly. 
Anyways, it's not really a scientific method, it's more like a feeling. Feeling is that it's actually doing a job, right? Just changing back to 300, clean it up nicely and put it back in. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, what I want to show you also that I do have, this is what came with it, right? I do have a whole bunch of uh, tips over here, all right? Um, so because uh, I used to have, I still have um, soldering iron like this one. That, no, it's not the one. Show you the wrong one. This one. So this is pretty much the same kind of connector, and this is from my Godrock soldering station. I guess that's somewhere here. Godrock. It's all crapped out. Uh, soldering station has died, and um, he uh, takes something shorted, and this thing is died as well. I do have also Hako clone here, which has completely different male connector, which is totally incompatible with this guy, but I do believe I can rewire it. Either I use this guy and use this connector, or I fix this guy. Anyways, I do have some spare, so you can play with them. I have a whole bunch of tips as well, because they are inexpensive at all. The another downside of this soldering iron without idle mode, it's that when you leave them unattended, they intend to oxidize. Uh, the solder start chewing on the copper or whatever material is there, and uh, they look terrible like this. Also, they're not really durable, so with time, eventually, they're gonna wear out. So you have to turn it off, because this thing doesn't have any idle time. Not I'm aware of. So, so these tips all over the, you can buy them all over the place. They are inexpensive. I have even genuine Hakko one, so which is awesome. <laughs> but that's not the most useful uh, tip. It's like I don't know this. I don't know how do you say it. It looks like a shovel. It's huge. Probably good. Gonna be good for some big components, right? So yeah, this is. Uh, so I really sat with those uh, tips. So I have like a ton of them now. I can do whatever I want. So what left now? Um, oh yeah, little little remark. So I think this sort of soldering iron is good for um, jobs like this. So if you want to repair SMPs, repair some uh, you know amplifiers, and do some Arduino project, it's amazing. You can do some even not uh, low pitch, too low pitch um, uh, surface mount components like this resistor. It be perfect. So that's that's gonna be great. For some like cell phone repairs, I don't think it's a great idea because I'm not really sure about temperature stability. Maybe if you find little teeny tiny uh, tip like this one, maybe like uh, again, it is still probably too big, you know. But maybe you wouldn't be able to uh, poke some capacitors and something like that. Obviously, for um, maybe cleaning up some pods, like you know, things like that. Anyway, so yeah, it's, it's, it's still capable, does the job, does the job, definitely gonna work for you if you wanna do some, um, yeah, some not big projects. All right, it's enough talking. Let's see what's inside of this little puppy and uh, let's go from there. I'm really curious what's inside. Mm, uh, let's do teardown. Then there is this, um, two PCBs over here one of them how to detach them okay so this one's probably related this the bottom one right there like here is probably for the controls like those buttons and things probably not the best screwdriver i picked for this test test doing my microphone test because this stupid thing has tendency to drop out sometime and I hate when it happens. Oh yeah, this big nut. Hmm. How to unknot it? Uh, just like this, nice. Aha, okie dokie, look at that. Can we remove this display kind of screen? Ta-da! Wow! Okay, we remove this, this sh transparent shield. Yeah. 
And we have a little cute display right here. Can we remove it? Yeah, it's just some kind of gluey. Oh, no, I can't. I have to disconnect it. Yeah, that sucks. I don't want to disconnect it. Oh, no, I do. Oh, there's a nice hole. Okay. Pretty cool. So here we are. I pulled this out of the, uh, the case. So we have a nice control board over here. A little cute OLED display. Uh, has some markings on it. So we have a main logic board over here with big beefy connector to the soldering iron. And uh, here's some probably voltage regulators over here, two, two, two chips. So on the back side we do have microcontroller and some other components which we're gonna take a look in details what the heck they are. Over here we do have a capacitor, filtering capacitor and a diode for diodes for rectification. Awesome. This is all is there and the microcontroller seems weird to me. I don't know what the heck is that. But again, I'm gonna take a look in details and talk about it. So, well, this is pretty straightforward. Oh yeah, interesting thing. Oops, that there is a some headers over here. So RX, uh, VCC, RX, TX and ground. So yeah, maybe this is hackable. Have to take a look what are those. Yeah, so I'm gonna take a look in details and of each individual component over here uh, to figure out what are they and then we're gonna come back and talk some business. Kitoki, okay, I did some research and we have some info on parts even on this little tiny uh, OLED display. So let's start from OLED display. This OLED display is NFP1106, which is I couldn't find anything, but I found SH. A 1106 which is 124 by 64 128 by 64 OLED screen and it has multiple different interfaces over here SPI, I2C and SPI2, SPI4 to drive this display so a little very nice little unit over here okay let's go further down here over here we have this dude I didn't know what the hell it is and this dude well I mean this dude sorry I know what it is. It's LM317. LM it's just an adjustable voltage regulator and it is adjustable voltage regulator. So yeah, I'm not sure what it drives. I don't think it drives this stuff because I don't think it need to. You, you, you just control straight out of here through this MOSFET to the soldering uh, iron. So yeah, I don't, I don't need to. But it probably used to power up all this stuff. So this MOSFET is, which is I mentioned, Unisonic Technologies P-channel MOSFET. So it's just P-channel MOSFET. No two transistors or anything like that. P-channel MOSFET. I didn't read this guy. Really hard to make it out out of it. So I have no idea. But looks looks like a some other voltage regulator taking into account. 3.3 volt. It's probably 3.3 volt voltage regulator for this guy because 5 volt over here. Aha! Uh -huh. So this guy set to 5 volt. This guy makes 3.3 volts for a, um, a OLED display. Cool. Figure this out. Okay. On the other side, we have two other, three other dudes. So first of all, we have this micro. This is STC 15W4K48S4. This is 48 kilobyte flash, 4 kilobyte SRAM, bunch of I2C and pulses modulated. It's typical, a uh, typical microcontroller, but typical not in same time. This is STC part uh, guy, and it's not like Arduino, whatever we get used to. This is 1851 Intel 8051. Uh, derivative MCU so yeah it uses completely different code base and assembler and things like that that uh, you know uh, not compatible with ARM it's more like Intel and it's not x86 architecture as well it's completely different architecture 1851 so yeah of course I'm not gonna hack anything here plus it's not that easy to work with 
because there are zero libraries for this guy. It's like pain in the ass. So forget it. Like forget it. Forget it. Uh, so this over here, I was right. This guy over there, over here is a op amp, and it's clearly uh, used to. Uh, it is actually straight connected straight to pins. Those two pins, and this is to uh, read the thermocouple uh, data and it's probably connected to ADC input uh, of this microcontroller somehow yeah real hard to tell because I'm not gonna trace this board uh, yeah anyways right this is pretty much all we have right did they cover everything yes I d oh no I didn't the, uh, I forgot about this little guy. This little guy turned out to be. This is very interesting. It was not easy to find, but this is Toshiba LDO TCR two EF one zero. But it says this. It's, it's probably a clone. This is one volt LDO. I don't know. Maybe it's a reference voltage. Maybe this thing is used as reference voltage for ADC over here or something to this extent. I do not know, but this is my assumption because I, I, I don't know why would you have one volt LDO here. Yeah, it's very interesting. The only my my guess is a reference voltage for ADC. Uh, external reference voltage so a whole bunch of um, four buttons connected to GPIOs of this microcontroller and that's pretty much it so yeah I mean that's that's cool it's it's well done the on, only sad part of it that because this is unknown architecture to me I won't be able to do any hackery do here so yeah just have to use it as it is so um, yeah and because this microcontroller is really really hard to work with at least to those people who don't know Chinese probably that's gonna remain as it is the only uh, other possibility is to actually reuse some of these parts and just put my uh, some own microcontroller if I really really want to do something about this soldering uh, station put some um, STM microcontroller and actually uh, utilize this nice a um, cute uh, OLED display to do something else to you know have a bit, bit more sophisticated stuff here but it's just like, who cares it's um, I'm dreaming here I don't have time for all that so let's assemble it and uh, conclude I'm gonna do a jump cut you're not gonna see all this fiddling and things like that Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, actually, quite important thing before I um, assemble it together. Um, I just want to check. Uh, what the heck is this wire? It turned out to be this is a ground. So this wire is a ground. So this thing is grounded. Okay. Um, the only thing what I would like to check is the resistance of of that. It just connected straight so ground like the the the, um, the ground of this PCB is connected to ground of the uh, of this thing all right uh, well um, I'm not sure if it's good or bad it's actually good to be grounded but at the same time I would don't I wanted to have some sort of few mag ohm resistors just to make sure I'm not gonna touch any sort of high voltage and just you know make some bunch of sparks yeah i don't know about that but anyways yeah i'm gonna finish but it is grounded just just straight ground no any mega ohm resistors or anything like that so guys i put it in its original shape so here we are um let's take a look if it's operational let's power it off put it on and it's gonna do its temperature thing but I was thinking, how can I call it? It's totally look like a little turtle. Maybe looks like a little crab. Uh, to me, actually, I think it come up with a better name. To me, it looks like a trilobite. Do you remember those ancient trilobites? Yeah, it's totally look like a trilobite or like a or tank. Yeah, yeah, cockpit or how do you call this top part of a tank? But I like it to call it to call it trilobite. <laughs> Well, jokes aside, this little trilobite is actually not too bad. It's uh, it's a nice little soldering iron. Probably it's really it's been uh, good 
if you uh, gonna buy the first soldering iron because it's relatively simple it's really reliable because it has very simple components inside it doesn't have switch mode power supply it has transformer it's uh, the, the downside obviously of this it's that's gonna be heavier so this thing gonna be heavier is not as portable as other lighter power supplies but because again it has a transformer it's been more reliable so it's not a bunch of high voltage capacitors which can go bad or whatever 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 it's only one electrolytic capacitor inside so in, and then it's it's in the filtering part so yeah I mean uh, still can go bad though but it's not close to any heating elements and things like that so it's 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 okay design it's relatively reliable it's not probably not hackable and uh, this oled display is nice and crisp i like it unfortunately there is no way to increase its brightness but still like for example white will be cool too but this blue is nice it has presets which is cool very nice and easy to change temperature right you obviously you cannot you know jump tens and hundreds so what if you want to do it like um, much faster so this is would have you would have to wait but still what is the lowest temperature by the way I'm curious hundred C so hundred C is lowest and uh, yeah, of course, you know, I'm going to take half an hour to get to the highest temperature. While I'm talking, I can do that. Uh, so, if you were gonna, uh, if you have already sophisticated or some more advanced soldering iron, probably don't need it. Uh, so, but if you're uh, upgrading from this regular plug into mains part uh, soldering iron, that's probably a good idea to have it. Any soldering iron with temperature uh, regulation is really good. 450C is top. So yeah, well I'm not gonna warm it up to 450C. It's unnecessary. Um, yeah, guys, I think I would say yeah, it's good. It's decent soldering iron, soldering uh, station. Sorry, soldering iron is just this soldering station. Uh, it's gonna be reliable. I would like to use it more to understand how good is it. Is it reliable? I don't have a means and ways of actually checking the preci how precise is the temperature readings, but yeah uh, i hope it's going to be on ballpark it's relatively capable i don't think i would be using it for any serious job like sorry not serious job very um important or critical jobs okay but for regular doing tweaking like uh, poking around with Arduino kind of level stuff like uh, doing some hobby RC kind of level stuff uh, that's going to be really really good the only thing it's heavier so guys that's going to be it not not much else I can say um, yeah if you want to see more reviews like that please subscribe if you want to support my channel please like and if you have any comments or you have opinions please uh, write down below uh, if someone interesting, I can provide a link to the website where you can buy the soldering iron. Uh, uh, yeah, and then you can take make own decision if you want it or not. Um, yeah, see you next time in another episode of Inside Out Electronics. Ciao.